writing down some things that I see like keep coming up that I guess I'm not that strong in. Can we do like how you taught me like the pheochromocytoma stuff? Just like maybe like quick facts. I have like um, renal papillary necrosis and interstitial nephritis. I don't know why I keep like confusing those two in questions. Um, and then like Epstein-Barr virus and then I have like the polycystic. Sure, sure. So which ones do you want to do first? It seems like... Uh... Um, yeah, <laughs> we can do, let me see, maybe the polycystic kidney disease, like the autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive. Polycystic kidney disease. Mm. Um, autosomal. Yeah, sure, hold on. Let me just... Or I can just, like, tell you what I have and whatever you think is... No, that's fine. I'm um, just... Okay. just opening up some stuff here and i'm going to share my screen so which one do you want to start with first again uh we can do the polycystic kidney disease polycystic kidney disease okay mm. all right so okay i do how, like how much do you know about pkd let's start with that first um I know basically like how it presents clinically. I know that with the autosomal dominant type, you have a lot of like liver involvement also. I'm not too familiar with like the autosomal recessive one, but yeah, like very aneurysms and things like that and autosomal dominant. I know they'll have like hypertension because of the increased renin. Um, what else? Yeah, bilateral enlarged kidneys mm -hmm. mostly yeah the young okay. adult autosomal dominant is more young adult okay 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 um okay not bad all right so okay let's do this then let me share my screen and get the whiteboard out can you see the whiteboard? Yeah. Can you see the whiteboard? Yeah, I can see it. All right, awesome. Okay. So polycystic kidney disease, like there's gonna you're gonna have a lot of cysts in your kidney, right? Like um that's the name of it. So just remember that there's a lot of cysts. So we so there's just two types, but let's do PKD, polycystic. Disease. All right. So this is what what they're gonna ask for step one. Um, let me draw some arrows here. So there's some dominant polycystic kidney disease. I'm just gonna put it like this. A, a okay. dominant, and then I'm gonna put another one. I'm going to put this one as small, autosomal recessive, right? So the big one's dominant, the small one's not dominant. This one's recessive. And the reason I'm doing this for you is, let me look at this. All right, so what chromosome is polycystic kidney disease on, autosomal dominant? The PKD gene. PKD1, right, and PKD2 gene. So if you count the amount of polycystic, if you count polycystic kidney, how many letters are there? You count polycystic kidney, there's 16 letters, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you count poly, if you count A, P, K, D, there's four letters. So that's how you remember the chromosomes. And then in polycystic, in the, adult, in the adult form, you're going to have cysts everywhere. All right? Everywhere. This is the key. And the here, the autosomal recessive, the cysts are localized. 
All right, so what I mean by cyst everywhere, you're gonna have cyst in your liver. You're gonna have cysts in, um, you can have cysts in your brain, which are called aneurysms. You can have obviously cysts in your kidneys. And um, that's what they mostly test on, but let's go mostly with uh, the AP, the AK. So here, the problem is your um, polycystin, right? Um, that's what's that's what's uh, the problem here. Um, the problem here is um, polycystin, and what polycystin does is that it encodes for for connective tissue integrity. So you can't have in connective tissue integrity if it's messed up because of cilia. Cilia. So this controls like cilia movement and stuff. So. If you have connective tissue problems, you're gonna have connective tissue like diseases. So uh, your, cyst, your cysts are expanding, expanding, expanding. And because the connective tissue is becoming more loose, right? So think about a lot of things that are just gonna expand in your body. So like your aneurysms, right? Your blood vessels mm. expand, right? Like you're, you're gonna have diver verticulosis your colon is going to expand mm -hmm. all right so your kidneys expand you have polycystic kidneys all right your liver expands liver cysts your mitral valve mitral valve expands you have mitral valve prolapse so all these things happen because of this, so like this connective tissue is messed up. So you have one, two, three, four, five high yield things here that you should know. All right, and this happens in adults, and this leads to hypertension. And the hypertension they they like to talk about is um, high renin hypertension. Mm. So you remember this high renin hypertension. The renin's high, and this is in adults. So just remember that this is adults. On the other side, um, here, if we're talking about kids, it's gonna be um, obviously in kids. These are in kids, kiddos. They're basically this. What's masked up here is fibrocystin. So it's in the name, right? Mm. Fibrocystin. So there's going to be a lot of fibrosis plus cyst. So you're going to have liver and kidney fibrosis leading to cysts. That's the two things. That's literally all you need to know. And this presents in kids. Remember that. Fibrosis. Okay. You have a lot of fibrosis and you have cysts everywhere. Um, so just, just remember that. And um, remember, if you have problems here, you would want to treat them. Okay, so here's kids. And this is usually like, let me put the age. This is usually like 40, -ish, 40 years old. And kids have it here. And um, here, the it's only treatment is replacement of the problem. So, like, you got to replace the liver and kidneys. And APAD, um, the cysts are everywhere, but the you can treat them with if you have an infection. You can give antibiotics if you have like end stage renal disease, high creatinine. You give um, dialysis. Um, change color. Okay, and then if you have like hot, a high renin, right? You give ACE inhibitors, so that's ERVs, mm. the treatment. So that's 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 PKD in a nutshell. Like that's most important stuff you need to know. Okay.
And uh, you said, so like for the recessive, for example, if they replace it, so it won't recur? No, it shouldn't. But the, the mortality is really high. Like by the time like they find the stuff, they are usually almost going to die. But like, uh, okay. you the treatment's the only option here. Okay. That's pretty much it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I took a picture. Um, yeah, that's. Did you get all that? And also make sure. Yeah. Here, like, remember they're kids, right? You don't want to do a CT scan in kids. So first step in kids would be ultrasound. All right, second step is positive and do a CT. Here you can go straight to a CT for autosomal dominant. Okay. You, you get it? Yeah. All right. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, remember the aneurysms, remember the diverticulosis, remember the liver expands. So did you, did you get all this? Yes, yes. All right, I'm going to move on to the next topic. Okay. All right. So what's the next thing you wanted to talk about? Um, can we do... Can we do fragile X syndrome? Fragile X syndrome? Yeah. Um, okay. Fragile Sorry, X. Sorry, I'm jumping around. <laughs> no problem. Fragile X syndrome. All right. So what do you know about fragile X so far? Uh, fragile X is a problem in the CGG gene. It's X-linked recessive. It so, causes. Mm -hmm. Um, it causes like a long face. Uh, the ears are kind of outwards, and autism, like an intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. They also have. Valve prolapse, there's mitral valve prolapse, and it's due to hypermethylation. But mm -hmm. FMR1 gene, something FMR1 gene, yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So, it's what they like. So, it's BGG, right? Yeah. Here, like in Spanish, that like I remember this mnemonic: conas grande grande. Okay. Conas, conas means like uh, testicles. Yeah. Grande grande. So they have really everything's like really large here. Just remember that. So your testicles, okay. your ears, your mitral valves. They get really large. Um, your jaw gets really large and jaw is large and elongated like it's coming down mm -hmm. um, their, their ears are like floppy right it's very large mm -hmm. they're very floppy ears and mitral valves are floppy so you have you actually here have bilateral mitral valve prolapse that's like really high yield so you have bilateral yeah. mitral valve prolapse and um it's important right here. So ears are floppy, mitral valve. And also what you need to know is hypermethylation, like you said, right, of CCG. Yeah. And what happens here is that you need to have over 200, 200 CCG repeats that are, that, that are hypermethylated. If it's under 200, right, this, this, this means fragile X syndrome. If it's under 200, CCG repeats, this is like mild. I remember this is dominant. Oh, dominant, okay. So this is mostly in males or females. Females are carriers, all right? Okay. Females are carriers, remember that. Um, so there's that. And so you have bilateral mitral valve prolapse. So the most common neurological 
disorder they have is autism, like you said, it's the most common over ADHD. So it's autism that you should remember. Okay, but they can also have ADHD? Yeah, but autism is the most okay. So just remember the most common things and you'll be really good. So there's that and... Um, <clears throat> So you just treat their problems, so like the prolapse, things like that? Yeah, and also another thing, um, I guess this is more symptomatic management. You really can't do anything here. Okay. It's a genetic disorder, so like they really can't. Also, what they like to ask is, the, remember since the females are the carriers, the females are increased risk for something called primary ovarian insufficiency. It's basically ovarian Ovarian under 40 years old. So menopause under 40. This is this is one one cause. Any causes for this, but like this is one cause that you should know. Right, menopause before 40. Okay. This is like the most commonly tested things that they ask about. And um, yeah, then, you know, they can put in some physiology here and stuff. It shouldn't be a problem. Like if you have primary ovarian failure, your you have high FSH, you have low estrogen, progesterone, Right, high FSH, LH. So, um, inhibin. Sorry, low low inhibin. So low in inhibin levels. So, stuff like this that you should know. Okay. Got it. All right, let's go to the next topic. Ready to go? Uh, yeah, next one. Uh, I just put Epstein Barr virus because it comes up in so many, like even uh, Anki decks and stuff. So I just wanted like a quick overview. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. This, this is good. So EBV is a virus, right? And it causes mononucleosis. Okay, I'll just put a few points of mono. As you see, most common in um, kissing teens. So like, so like 14, like let's say like 13 to like 22 or 20, let's just say that, years old. Um, can I change the text? Can you still see it or is it too small? Yeah, no, it's okay. okay. Right. So it's most commonly in that you have something called um, heterophil antibodies. So they'll give you some antibodies like sheep or heterophil means other than human. You have here the atypical lymphocytes. Atypical lymphocytes are CD8 cells that are stimulated. You need to know what this atypical lymphocyte looks like. It's super high yield. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like, they have like a bluish cytoplasm. That's important. It looks bluish. Like, lymphocytes should not have cytoplasms. Remember, lymphocytes are like all nucleus, but here this have a, this has a bluish cytoplasm. <laughs> That's super important. For the like the lymphocytes, like the CD8, CD40, do I just need to like memorize those? Yeah, you need what to memorize. Is associated? Okay. Yeah, you need to memorize which cells it is to CD8, you know, the atypical lymphocytes. Heterophil antibodies are like antibodies that are like animal antibodies. So if you see like horse, the person has or so you you it's monospot test detects 
the antibodies, all right? But it's it's not really that good test, but it can you can use it. Here you have, you can get, this is how it presents. So presentation 19, where fever, cough, you can say cough, tonsillar erythema, pharyngitis, diffuse lymphadenopathy, so like cervical, you have cervical, um, um, axillary, inguinal, you can have like diffuse lymphadenopathy, that presents like this, so you have lymphocytosis as well, and um, you give antibiotics and you think it's like, like you think it's a bacterial infection and it gets worse. So you give antibiotics like ampicillin, and it gets worse. And these are all like important clues. Let me see that presentation says clues. Um, there's that, you also have splenomegaly which can rupture, which can cause death. So that's why anyone with mono, you need to avoid trauma, slash sports that cause trauma, but it's mostly trauma, any type of trauma. That's mono. So EBV, um, can also, the receptor you need to know is a CD21 receptor. Mm -hmm. CD21, I remember this, like Epstein bar, right? The bar. In America, you need to be 21 to get into a bar. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's like the same one in Anki, they were. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. This, yeah. You need to be 21. And then basically another thing is that EBV, you can have um, cancers with EBV. So something called primary EBV cancers. We go primary CNS lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Primary CNS lymphoma is HIV. HIV ring enhancing lesion in the brain. Hodgkin's lymphoma is weight loss, night sweats, non tender lymph adenopathy with, um, there's different types, but like there's, that's what it is. Um, these are the most important things. So weight loss, nice, non-tender lymphadenopathy, young, female mostly, but it could be a male. So, so they'd have like a history of being sick with like a monotype thing and then no. later on or? Okay. No, this is just, this is just complete, this is unrelated to mono here. Oh. This is just cancers with EBV that are high yield. All right, this is unrelated to mono. This is just EBV is known to be a culprit of these cancers. They don't ever have to get, but they can. But it's the same viruses. Yeah, it's the virus okay. that can cause this. Um, there's that stuff. So Hodgkin's lymphoma is pretty high yield. There's like different types. There's nodular. There is... Um, uh, lymphocytic predominant. There is a uh, lymphocytic depleted. Just one more. Um, there is one more mixed. So like this has like eosinophils in 
here. This is nodular, most common in females. And I think it's the most common, most common lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, that's EBV in a nutshell, pretty much. But like the most important thing are these atypical lymphocytes. These atypical lymphocytes right here. And CD8, the antibodies, the presentation. So this, this is super important, but don't forget the cancers as well. Okay, and like I remember seeing it under like, um triggering lupus and triggering other things like GBS, I think. What, is it just the immune response? Like, I don't really need to focus too much on it. Just know it as like one of the causes or? Sorry, for what? Like for lupus, for example, I've seen that like, it can be like a trigger. Oh yeah, it can be a trigger, but like, it's not really like, a lot of things can trigger lupus. It's just oh, okay. response. It's not really the EBV. Another thing that's is hairy. Leukoplakia. I don't know if you know about this. It's yeah, I've heard of it, but I'm not too familiar with it. Tongue lesion on the lateral side. Mm -hmm. So there's like a erythematous, mostly, it's mostly erythematous, but like it looks like a white plaque, erythematous slash white plaque the lateral side of the tongue. This is benign. It looks like cancer, it's not cancer. It's benign and it is caused by EBV as well. Okay. So there's also that, um, let me see if I'm forgetting anything. Um, uh, do, 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 do. You see, uh, don't think I'm forgetting anything. I think I'm covered most things here. So, okay. what about the um the treatment? Like treatment for this is just supportive. For mono, it's just uh, okay. You don't give anything. Cancers, you want to remove them. Hairy leukoplakia, you would want to um you just leave it. Anything. Okay. Yeah, to get is there like any difference like even like in the types of people like whether they're gonna get mono or whether they're gonna get cancer or is it just kind of like random or for what oh like yeah so like the primary cns lymphoma like that's more like an hiv patients so yeah, okay okay this is hiv here mm. hiv the hodgkin's lymphoma it's it's pretty random you really can't tell but like it's pretty random. Hairy leukoplakia is pretty random. So it's just like genetics plays a role here. Um, so that's pretty much it for this. So like you're gonna have to know like um, also if you really want to know multiple sclerosis is triggered also by BB. That's just another fact. You should, you should really know like the primary CNS lymphoma, how it presents, Hodgkin's lymphoma, how it presents, hairy leukoplakia, how it presents, mono, how it presents, um, multiple sclerosis, how it presents. Okay. So like, if you have any problems, just let me know. I can go over some things. But if you're okay, then- no, I'll definitely go into more detail after. <laughs> just yeah. But this is like the most important stuff that you should know. Okay. I just summarized it, but like in the context, they're going to obviously ask you more information. Mm. But this is okay. super high yield, as you should really know. This is like, this is, this is like the, like not even the bare minimum. Like this is like something that will help you on the exam. Like atypical lymphocytes mm -hmm. are heterophile antibodies, what they are how it presents, it's very confused. It's confused usually with like strep pharyngitis, but um, you, mm. that's usually what happens. 
because you give amp this is also important you give ampicillin and it gets worse that's a key that's a key thing and you know they have lymphocytosis okay. they're trying to tell you it's cancer you know they're like saying the kid has cancer because of this mm. guy has cancer because of this but just know that it's going to be an acute presentation you know it's mono it's like an infection so it's going to be like one to two weeks you know cancer would be more chronic and it, there's a difference between cancer and infection so infection has tender painful lymph i don't know pathy, right yeah uh, then neuropathy and then usually lymph nodes are small like usually under two centimeters um they're mobile slash um movable these are all features of it not being cancer. All right, cancer would be non-tender lymphadenopathy, large lymph nodes, not non-mobile slash integrated. these are things that you should really know okay yeah okay thank you no problem do you want me to clear it and go to the next topic yes please which topics is next um the next one i have is like um hiv pharmacotherapy kind of having a hard time like um Memorizing it, okay, like two NRTIs, but understanding it. HIV what? Therapy? Pharmacotherapy, yeah. Okay, this is, this is like a very like complicated thing, but uh, I'll go over it. Let's see. Oh. Mostly memorization, so there's two things, just like the heart therapy. So HIV, anti, so highly, high, anti-retroviral therapy. Highly active anti-retroviral therapy. So for this, you can give NRTI or you can give your NRTI, you can give your Proteas inhibitor, or you can give your integrase inhibitors. Okay. All right, these are the four categories. Bottom line is you always want to give two plus one. You always want to give two NNRTIs or NRTIs. Okay, you want to give like two, two, it's called the two plus one therapy. You give two and then RTIs and then one of the other, any other one. So you can give something like um, the most common is um, amtricitabine and nofovir. And um, you can give any of the other ones. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much like you, you give two NRTIs and then any of the other ones. So, um, the names of these are like super freaking hard, <laughs> but like yeah. you remember them. And so like they, you just have to memorize the names. Like um, I really can't help you around yeah. just to know that you basically, um, the NRTIs, two of the NRTIs, the two plus one therapies, two NRTIs plus any of the other ones, okay? Okay. Um, and then you can give you like a mnemonic here. 
So you're, you're basically, um, your protease inhibitors um, are gonna have gravier in the end. Mm. So anything with gravier is protease inhibitor, integrase inhibitor is gonna have um, like mostly tech, uh, they're gonna sound like integrase inhibitors, like, um, sorry, opposites. This is gonna be Navier. This is gonna be integrase gravier. So it's got like grav in there. Mm. The grav in here and the grav in there and then Navier is protease inhibitors. The NNR, the, um, the NNRTIs, they usually have veer in the middle of their names. So something veer, veer in the middle of the names. Okay, and that's what you really know, um, like which ones to basically give like that. But then also some high yield ones they I like to ask is like GP41 and then there's GP120. So GP120 is basically, these are part of the envelope around the around the virus. So GP41 um, helps with entry. GP120 also helps with entry. So for GP120, you give something called Mirivirac, and then GP41 and fu fusion. GP41 helps with fusion. So. Um, for GP41, you basically want to give something called enfuvaride. Enfuvaride. I don't think I'm spelling it right. Um, enfu enfuvertide. Enfuvertide. It's got fusion in there. Mm. So, fusion. And fuvertides helps with fusion. So these are like in addition to the two plus one. No, this this mm -hmm. basically are like there's usually like tested because of like they're targeting certain receptors. That's why. Oh okay. Yeah, you, that's why. That's why. Um, something that's also high yield is like they like to sometimes ask like. Person has HIV plus hepatitis B. What can you give? You can give 10 no full beer. To no full beers can be used in both situations. All right. Like there's some drugs in HIV that can be used for other things. So that's also pretty important. Um, so basically, in pro, your protease inhibitors, they cause some side effects that they can basically cause are um, pretty important. And protease inhibitors cause like hyperlipidemia, cause diarrhea. Uh, they can also cause um, <clears throat> things along those lines like uh, metabolic syndrome. So that's what protease inhibitors usually cause. Um, the NRTIs, like the ones that are really important. Um, there's some ones that you should really know, like didanosine, lamivudine, nistavudine, um, a back, like a back of ear is super important. A back, uh, a B A C A V I R, a back of ear. This has basically. In order to use this, the person needs to have HLA-B27 allele. So before you use this, check for HLA-B27 allele. Yeah, for it to like work properly, needs to have that. And this, this can cause anaphylaxis reaction. Mm. So the person can die because of anaphylaxis if they get this, but like, that's what it is. You have to check for HLA-B27. Um, you have to check, yeah, you have to check for this allele. It's either, it's like a really big allele, like yeah, B B57, like um, 
that's what it is. Um, your NRTIs, like these ones, um, if you really want to know, uh, basically here, let me just finish this. So then you have Lamuvudine, you have Stabuvudine, both of these cause neuropathic problems. All right, you have didanosine. This is super important. This causes pancreatitis and metabolic acidosis. And then your NNRTIs. There's envir, not enviritide, um, called envirinesvir. And fear and as and oh man, I, I hate these names. I, I really don't like yeah. <laughs> I'm having such a hard time with the names too. Then live. Ne nevirapine, nevirapine. They have vir in the middle of the names, right? Vir, vir. So they're mm -hmm. an RTI. And what these do basically is pretty cool. They cause vivid dreams. Mm -hmm. They sometimes like to ask that. They like to, they cause vivid dreams. Um, yeah. Um, there's that, and so basically just like generalize these, generalized over here, the side effects, All right? Pancreatitis, electrolyte, abnormalities, lactic acidosis, neutropenia. So basically the most important ones are the NRTIs. But like okay. integrase inhibitors like really aren't that high yield. They never almost ask about like <laughs> when when to give them, but uh, like what side effects they have. Um, but just remember this also here. Uh, one thing is you need to check for CCR5 here, receptor, because GP120, attaches to CCR5. And if you, if there is a heterozygous mutation or there's a problem with CCR5, this drug won't work. And also if there's a mutation in the CCR5 receptor, there's going to be less lower chance of getting AIDS. Because remember, G attaches to the um, it attaches to the cell membrane of CD4 cells. So the, remember, HIV attaches to CD4, right? And it attaches to macrophages. So the GP1, the GP41. And the GP120, the GP41 is the main receptor that attaches to CD4 cells. And then GP120 is the uh, receptor that attaches to CCR5 or CXCR5. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so do these have anything to do with like post prophylaxis or stuff, something like that? No. So you want, you want to talk about HIV prophylaxis. Okay, yeah. Okay. Do you want to go to a different, like, what do you want to do? No, we can continue. I'd rather, like, finish the other. Okay, so the GP41 attaches to CD4. All right. Uh, 
That's what you need to know. Okay. Um, like I know this is a lot, but like, this is pretty high yield stuff. Like this is pretty good stuff. Um, just, I really can't tell you that nothing here is not important. Okay. Um, there's that. So then there's like HIV itself is a super high yield topic in terms of treatment, in terms of um, basically the diseases that happen in HIV. Mm. Like, yeah, I was just about to ask, like the prophylaxis, I guess that's only once the CD counts start becoming low, right? Yeah, so, okay. yeah, you want to do that now? Yeah, we can go over that. Okay. All right, let's do by CD count. So, what's, what defines AIDS? What CD count? Three hundred, two hundred, three hundred, two hundred. Eighty-four under two hundred. Good. You have candidiasis rush. You have um, Aposi sarcoma. You have um, PCP pneumonia, pneumocystis pneumonia. Um, you have like, basically like these are all age defining lesions. Okay. All right, so like age defining lesions. Um, they're pretty important. Okay, so like that's what you need to know here. Um, also what you need to know is how to diagnose age. Diagnosis is basically with an ELISA. This is third generation immunoassay. This checks for your antigens. All right, now they're doing a newer thing called the fourth generation assay. Just like the ELISA, but they check for your P24 antigen, which is basically like the in core antigen as well plus HIV RNA, okay? And then confirmation is the Western blot. Mm. So anytime you have under 500 CD4 count, you start getting recurrent strep pneumonia, pneumococcal, let me say pneumo pneumococcal pneumonia. Okay, you start getting thrush. You start getting reactivation of TB. Anytime you're under 200, 84 count, you start getting um, the most important pneumocystis pneumonia. That is the most important. You can also get herpes herpes reactivation. That's pretty important, but I'll come back later to this. Anything you have under 150, CD4, you basically start getting your fungus infections, like your cryptococcus, histoplasma, cox, um, histoplasma, blastomycosis, but remember, this is only in high risk people. So wherever histoplasmosis is, so like um, this depends on geographic location. It's only high risk people only. Okay, and then you have under fifty, which is super important because here you start getting CMV retinitis. Here you get something called primary CNS lymphoma. You also get sometimes um, 
mac slash mia mycobacterium intracellular so those are the things that you need to know and under 150 you also start getting something called toxoplasmosis So under 200 prophylaxis, you want to get for pneumocystis is TMP, SMX, or Dapsone. Change the color. All right. So these are the... Here for toxoplasmosis, you also want to get TMP, SMX, or Dapsone. All right. For the fungus ones, you want to get itraconazole. And you give this for toxo. Under here, you basically you don't really get prophylaxis for CMV retinitis and stuff. Um, but you, if you really like feel to need to, but like, I don't think you do. Um, but like the thing is that the MAC, the MIA or the MAC, um, this like is not recommended anymore to give prophylaxis anymore. Mm. But like some people do give it, um, but it's not really recommended that you give it anymore because it really doesn't help as much as what they say. So for you world purposes, do not prophylax or MAC. All right, for you world purposes, do not prophylax for MAC. So these are, remember, these are all primary prophylaxis. Why primary? Because you're not really, um, you never really got these before, right? Mm. So that's that right there. So these are primary. Let me just change this. Primary prophylaxis. There's something called secondary prophylaxis, which you get. Like you've had these infections and you have to prophylax them again. So like there's that as well. But like, I don't think you need to know about that. And when do you discontinue these? Discontinuous after six months. Regardless of the CD4 time? No, after six months of a CD4 count higher than when you started the prophylaxis. So if you started, if you started the pneumocystis prophylaxis under 200, right? Hmm. And if the CD4 count basically, if the CD4 count basically rises over 200, you have to wait six months before you can stop it. If you started, most, if you started the toxoplasma or the fungal prophylaxis under 150, and then it goes over 150, you have to wait six months before you stop it. Mm -hmm. So if you say it's at 150 and you six months later, it's still below say 500, would you continue doing the prophylaxis for that for the next six months? No. Or, okay. If it's over one, remember the, these infections happen under 150. So if it's over one, if it's 200, 300, if it's 300, it's still eight. Like it's suppose it's still under 200, right? But it's over 150. And it's been over, and it's been six months, you can stop it. Because these infections are low risk over 150. They're not going to happen. There's no need to give them treatment. Okay. Um, there's that. Um, Dr. Karen, did you erase the last slide of the pharmacotherapy? Sorry? Did you erase the last slide, the pharmacotherapy? The yeah, that, that, I mean, I can, ah, okay. bring, okay. I can bring it back, but like this all has to be erased. Yeah, I, I, did, I did the picture of this one, but that one I didn't. I wrote down most of it, though, so it's okay. Here you go. 
Thank you. Okay. Got it? Yeah, thank you. So there's that, and then I'm gonna erase this. You, you got this? Okay, yes, I got it. Now there is something called your know, vaccinations. Uh, uh, this, step one first, right? Sorry? Are you gonna do step, which step are you doing first? Uh, no, I'll do step one first, yeah. Okay, so vaccinations are not high yield then for step one. Okay. Okay, so, but just remember, you know, for just for general information, get flu vaccine every year, All right? Give them, if they have HIV, you also want to give them, um, just remember under 200 CD4 count, do not give live vaccines. Varicella, you can't give these. You can't give these vaccines to to these people because they're um, they're basically live vaccines, all right. And what what will happen is the vaccines will get reactivated, and the person will almost pretty much the large person will die. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, but like there's the whole vaccine stuff like for H for HAV, HPV, um, flu, there is pneumococcal vaccine, there is what else? There is um, oh yeah, how to forget this HPV, there is what else? Oh come on, think. Uh, HPV and meningococcal. So like these are, like, I, don't, I don't think they'll ask you, this, but like that's step two. So don't even think about this, but just remember under 200 person or pregnant, all right, or child under one, don't give live, never give live vaccines. MMR, varicella, they're live. Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't give these okay. to pregnant women or a child under one or people that have AIDS. That's basically what you need to know for AIDS for step one. Okay. Mostly they ask about the drug, not, not, they won't ask about the drugs. They'll ask about the side effects of the drug. All right. So the side effects are super important. They'll also ask about the receptors, the receptors are pretty hot. They'll also ask about how to diagnose AIDS, like AIDS-defining lesions, the diagnosis using the immunoassays. Mm. Definitely know those. Okay. You good? Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? Um, I had a few more on the list. I don't think I have time. I had just like cytomegalovirus. Which and virus? I had Cytomegalovirus, CMV. Oh, CMV. So we can go over. Yeah. And what else do you want to talk about? I had, um, I don't, I just keep getting it wrong. Like the renal papillary necrosis and the interstitial nephritis. All right, let's do that like, first. Let me just go, go over that. All right. Here you have renal papillary necrosis. And here you have interstitial nephritis. do this so here remember the mnemonic here that basically predisposes to uh, renal papillary necrosis do you know the mnemonic or uh, no no I'm sorry. okay so basically the mnemonic is sad s a a d so diabetes analgesics, um, what's the other A? Um, acute pyelonephritis, sickle cell disease, okay? Interstitial nephritis, there's a mnemonic for this. Oh, what was the mnemonic for this, man? 
um, interstitial nephritis. Let's see. Uh, there was a mnemonic for it. Uh, anyways, whatever. Sulfa drugs. Um, oh, yeah. Pain free. P. Um, so peeing like diuretics, pain free like NSAIDs. Mm. Um, Salpa, sulfa drugs. Mycoplasma can cause this. There's more P in mycoplasma. Um, oh man, I can't be forgetting the mnemonic. It's like pain free P. Uh, okay, well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I forgot the mnemonic, but like I can put the stuff in. I just wanted to make it easier for you. <laughs> um, okay. um, oh, yes, okay. So penicillins. Um, Riff and pin. All right, so like the P's, the P, 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 P. Like there are the P's here, and then the last P is let me put this proton pump inhibitor. So your proton pump inhibitors. Right? Mm. These are the risk factors. As you can see, none of them overlap except NSAIDs. Okay. Only thing that overlaps are NSAIDs, that's it. But let me tell you the presentation now. Here, you're gonna have hematuria. All right, you're gonna have hematuria here because your, your skin stuff's dying down. You're gonna be, you check your UA, there's casts, red blood cells casts, red blood cells, Tubular casts, mostly tubular. Tubular, tubular casts. And that's how it's going to present. And then um, basically, acute kidney decline. And then here, it's going to present with fever, rash. Um, eosinophilia slash eosinophiluria and you're going to also have a history of offending agent within the last two weeks okay that's how it's going to present and if you check the uas there's WBC cast. That's what it is. Okay. That's that's the only way like you can really tell them apart. Um, okay. Like that's that's one of the major ways. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then. Yeah, this, this, this is it. So if you see a fever rash, eosinophilia or eosinophiluria, they're like, you check your UA, there's like eosinophils in there. Like. Okay. Like this is, then you know it's this, and you have like this, they're on diuretics, and sulfur drug, mycoplasma, they're on penicillins, they're on rifampin, mm -hmm pump inhibitor like some mm -hmm. this can cause to like short grins sle and stuff but like don't worry about that all okay. right yeah, but like just worry about the most common stuff here and obviously they're both almost <laughs> gonna have cva tenderness this gun's gonna have cva tenderness as well but like P here is, where is it? 
All right, and what caused it? What caused okay. this? And then hematuria and then acute kidney decline. Like high creatinine. Like that's major difference. So the risk factors are different. And then basically you have hematuria here. You don't have hematuria on the other one. Okay. And then sometimes they like to say like the CT shows ring enhancing. It's, so that's also another thing. Got it? Yeah. All right. So we went over a lot of stuff today. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I just tried to like skim over the high stuff, like high yield stuff. This is like what they're going to ask you. Okay. Yeah. This is like the stuff like in the last two, if it's before the last two days or like this morning or yesterday, then I'll go through it on my own. But this is like what I've been confused about just like the last two days. That's why. I haven't had time to like go through it properly, but I'll go through it again now that we've gone over like the basics. Yeah, like this is this is this stuff right here. It's gonna be super important for you because, um, the, as you can tell, the risk factors are different. Like here, it's completely different risk factors, and like yeah, right here, completely different. Yeah. And then the risk. I feel factors. dumb now that you went over it like this because, like, I don't know why I kept confusing the two. Like during my like Anki in Anki, I kept confusing them like with the, <laughs> the thing. But yeah, they. Completely yeah, remember the fever. You don't have fever in hemo in in renal papillary necrosis. All right. You remember the rash. It's basically like it's it's very distinct. Like you should you should be getting okay. these right now. Like if you weren't before. Okay. So just remember that the UA, everything's going to be more different here. Okay. So Dr. Karen, do you mind if like um, each time, maybe if, if you don't think it's necessary to take up the whole time with it, but like maybe one or two topics, we can start with like this in the beginning and then do questions or? Yeah, 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 we can. That's oh. no problem. Whichever ones you want to talk about, just let me know. And we can hundred percent. I'll tell you like the highest yield stuff that you need to know for the for the step one. Okay, perfect. Because yeah, like sometimes sometimes they put in a lot of information and it's not really necessary. And yeah. things like this will definitely help in the future, especially answering questions and just knowing knowledge based based information. Okay, sounds good. So, this is great. Yeah. I think I went over a lot of high yield stuff like CMV. Like I know you want to talk about yeah. that. that's um, there's not many high yield things about CMV other than like okay. um a little like other than like maybe it presents similarly to like EBV, but like you can differentiate them easily. I can okay. I can be with that next time. And okay. yeah, next time. So I'm gonna do the next session. Um up to you. Is this any time, um, like an hour before sunset is good with me? <laughs> okay. Like around this time is like perfect. All right. Yeah, but I'm okay any day of the week or weekend. Yeah, no problem. I will let you know. Uh, probably earlier next week than later. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Like Wednesday or maybe even, maybe even tomorrow. Uh, okay, no worries. All right, but I'll definitely let you know um, in the morning. Like, you usually break your fast in the morning, right? Huh? Uh, no, we break our fast at sunset, but, like, we wake up to eat before sunrise, like a little pre-snack thing. Okay, so <laughs> if I messaged you at nighttime, my time, well, you would be able to get in the um, Yeah. Yeah. Or would, it, or would it affect your schedule? Because I'm, I'm, I'm seven hours ahead of you. So it, okay. normally we wake up around like 4, 4.30 a.m. to like eat something before the day starts, like before sunrise. 
Oh, wow. So like that's like 9 p.m. my time. Yeah, so I normally catch your messages like around that time. Okay, okay. And do you go back to sleep or like what's up? You go back to sleep after eating? Uh, yeah, it, de it, it depends. Like I can, yeah, I'll go back to sleep for a little bit, but I'll wake up still early just to start like my studying. Okay, so right now it's like 4.40 where you are. Yeah, right now it's 4.40 p.m. So we break fast in two hours, but like my productivity is very low at the moment. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah. PM or AM? Huh? Right now it's PM. Okay, all right. Yeah, so we break fast around 6.40 p.m. and we wake up to like eat something before we start our fast around 4 a.m. or 10 a.m. like that. Okay, all right, no worries, that sounds good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. If you need any clarification, just let me know. Okay, sounds good. I will. Thank you for your time. Yeah, no worries. Good luck. Thank you. Bye.